Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Ace Attorney Trilogy. It's about time we finish Bridge to the Turnabout. Let's go. <laughs> As you can see, it's been a while since the last time I recorded, but this is a really good case and it deserves to be finished. So let's do it. February 9th, 9.47am, District Court, Defendant Lobby, Number 1. Oh my, Mr. Larice feels that way about me? Apparently, he isn't aware of your real secret at all. This is no time to be embarrassed. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just hardly accustomed to that sort of thing. Worry not. And in any case, whatever it was that he saw on the night of the incident, mark my words, I will drag it out of him. That means... Mr. Larice is the witness today? No. I believe that none will be the first to take the stand. Mr. Bikini. He claims to have seen the very instant in which you carried out the crime. I just want to ask you one last time. It really wasn't you who killed Miss Elise Junim, correct? That is correct. It wasn't me. Very well then. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes. You are a prosecutor, aren't you? Are you sure about this? Your true identity is revealed. Don't worry, I've made the necessary arrangements. Uh, I see. Iris, it is a prosecutor's job to doubt people. But right now, I am a defense attorney. A defense attorney's job is to believe in people, and to believe until the bitter end. That's what my friend told me once. Mr. Edgeworth. I simply ask that you watch and decide for yourself whether or not I am fit to do the task I have been entrusted. Very well, sir. I leave my defense in your capable hands. February 9th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number seven. Court is now in session for the trial of Sister Iris of Hazakura Temple. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The defense does indeed appear to be ready. However, the same cannot be said for the prosecution in this case. Indeed. I'm not sure I like such a blatant waste of this court's time. An empty prosecutor's chair can only mean that the prosecutor has no confidence in their ability to prove their case. It would seem this case is already over before it has a chance to begin. I am ready to announce my verdict at this time. This court finds the defendant... Objection! The prosecution stands ready. Uh, and you are? Francisca Von Karma, prosecuting Prodigy. Von Karma, you say? For chance, you wouldn't be of any relation to the legendary prosecutor Manfred Von Karma. Legends are a thing of the past. I am a Von Karma, that is all. On a special request, I flew in today for the purposes of prosecuting this case. Y you did? Then you must be quite a big shot, eh? Uh, by the way, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. I'm almost certain that I've seen you somewhere before. Why am I just imagining things? You look very much like a prosecutor I met once. I believe you were imagining things, Your Honor. Ms. Von Karma, do you have anything to say? There is no such weakling as this man among those of the prosecutor's office. Th there isn't? But I'm sure once before in a courtroom, I told you there is no such weakling. What is that? A whip? I'm not sure I have such a thing in my courtroom. But bailiff, remove that whip at... I have no objection to the whip. Y you don't? Prosecution can wield a whip or drink 17 cups of coffee, but there is still only one truth. That is what I stand here to prove today. This promises to be interesting, Miles Edgebath. I had expected to face Phoenix Vite here today, but looking at you now, maybe this is what I've been waiting for all this time. 
Miles Edgeworth, I will not allow this chance to crush you slip through my fingers. Do you slip through my fingers? There's a missing word there. <laughs> I see you brought your flair for the hisatronic. His, his trionic, sorry. Typo. Allow me to add to the list of things I'm not sure about. People acting bizarrely in my court. Waha! The stage is set. Now continue with the proceedings, Your Honor. Hopefully my frenzy voice is better now. It's still not great. <laughs> Very well, Ms. Von Karma, please give an outline of this case. With as little whipping as possible. The murder victim is the famed picture book author, Miss Elise Dunim. The body was found in the Hazakura Temple courtyard. He had been stabbed through the torso by a ceremonial sword from a golden statue. The sword in this picture is the weapon in question, correct? Very well. The court accepts this photo of the crime scene. Crime photo I do the court record. There is no mistake. This buzzed the doing of Sister Iris. After all, there is a witness to her crime. Very well. Please bring this witness to the stand. And so it begins. My first and last trial as a defense attorney. Witness, state your name and occupation, please. Hold on here, I'm not sure if I, about being not sure if I care for this at all. <laughs> Witness, please stand up nice and straight. If I recall correctly, there are a few milk crates in the defendant's lobby for our back pain plagued witness. Bailiff, fetch a crate for this poor lady, please. Once again, your name and occupation, please. Little old me. Well, I'm the head nun of Hazakura Temple on Eagle Mountain. My name is Bikini. You got it? Bikini. Nice to meet everyone. You don't appear to be wearing a bikini right now. Wah! The courtroom is the Garden of Holy Judgment. Those with lechery in their hearts should leave this sanctuary at once. You want me to leave? I need to get your bikinis in a twist. Let me tell you, I'm a sight to behold in summer. <laughs> in any case, witness, I hear that you saw the crime take place on the night in question. That's right. I can still hardly believe it myself, to be honest. There's no way dear little Iris could do anything like that. Let us hear what you have to say then. First, tell us about your own movements that night, eh? A boot. <laughs> the night of the murder. That night I was helping an acolyte with her training in the inner temple, but... Well, as you can see, my back likes to act up, violently. So, I left Iris to help the acolyte and returned to Hazakura Temple. I don't know what accent I'm doing here, but I'm just trying something out. <laughs> There's no bath at the inner temple, you see. I needed a long, hot soak. It was after I had finished, just as I was heading back. That's when I saw it. Hmm. So it was simply coincidence that you found yourself returning to Hazakura Temple? Yes, you could say that. If my back hadn't been in so much pain, I would have stayed at the Inner Temple. That sounds like a pretty important statement she just made. There is only one problem with this testimony that I can see. And you're not about to fall at the first hurdle. Now are you, Miles Edge Vath? Mr. Edgeworth, please begin your cross-examination. Night of the murder. Hold it! What is this inner temple? Well, see, conversing with the spirits is what we train people to do, right? We'll be the ones asking you the questions, madame. In order to do that, a place strong in spiritual power is required. There's a small temple across Dusky Bridge called the Inner Temple. Acolytes must spend an entire night there to undergo intense training. And how exactly do you help with this process? It's all quite exacting. It can't be performed without a nun supervising. Like a tutor, watching to make sure a spoiled child studies. Tutor with a whip in your case. If that is the case, then why did you return to Hazakura Temple where the murder took place? Hold it! 
violently. That's right. No laughing matter, especially in winter. I can't hold anything heavier than a knife and fork during the cold months. Just being alive is like strict training. <laughs> On the night of the murder, was this fabulous back of yours hurting again? That's right, raging like a bull in a pig pen. I almost fainted once or twice. I just knew that unless I warmed it up, it was going to finally finish me off. You left Iris to help. With what? What do you think? The Acolyte's training, of course. It was just past 10pm, so we're starting to enter into the training exercises proper. Wasn't it your place to remain with the Disciple? Well, the job is simply to watch over the Acolytes so they don't pass away. Just to confirm this point again, that night, you met Iris in the Inner Temple, correct? Y yes, yes. She's a gentle, honest girl. She's never once failed to follow my directions. Hold it! So you return to the Hazakura Temple in order to take a bath? My back is to blame for everything. The do or be done in kind of world after all. How long were you in the bath for, if you don't mind my asking? My, 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 what a filthy little rogue you are. I know what's on your mind. I bet your next question is gonna be, where exactly did you wash? Ah, this is why you have to watch the young ones. Oh, what are you going on about? I was, ah! Pathetic, Mal's Edge Vath. The lowest of the low. Is there some sort of kick me sign stuck to the defense's bench? Anyway, I couldn't afford to be away from my post for too long, you understand, so. Crime took place in the courtyard, correct? When you go from my room to the main hall, you have to take a winding hallway from which you can see the courtyard. That's right, in other words, it was pure coincidence that the witness saw the crime taking place before her eyes. There was no complicated setup in this case. Hmm, that certainly seems to be true. There is indeed only one problem with this testimony. If I can clearly point out what it is, then I can begin to quantify just how good this witness's memory and observation skills are. Okay, so our problem here... Uh, if we look at the evidence we've been given, uh, we have been told that Iris uh, didn't ever go to the Inner Temple, so she wouldn't have been able to be left to help the Acolyte. The Acolyte being Maya, of course. Witnesses have to undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. Defendant's fate rests on their powers of observation and memory, after all. Well, well, well. Don't worry. I'm more than up to the task. I'm a woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of Hazakura Temple. In that case, Ms. Honcho, I'd like you to explain something for me. The discrepancy between your testimony and that of the defendant, Iris. She claims that after ringing the lights up bell, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means she did not go to the inner temple at all. N no You said that? A defendant or a witness? Who is more likely to lie, do you suppose? The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. But that is completely illogical. The murder was committed in the courtyard of Hazakura Temple. Claiming that she went to the inner temple would make for a much better alibi. But that is odd. Whatever the reason, I can't believe that she would lie. Hmm, she does indeed have honest eyes. Wah! All people lie. That is my belief. Why am I the only one being whipped in here? Anyway, neither the witness nor the defendant have any reason to lie. Which means... You must call your memory into question. Ding -a -ding -a -ding. You're older than me and yet you want to play that game, do you? Uh, oh, well, that isn't exactly what I... My memory is perfect, crystal clear, especially in winter. And I suppose it's too early to end this cross-examination, eh? Mr. Edgeworth, if you are going to question the memory of this witness, you will need to show me a more decisive piece of evidence. Understood, Your Honour was naive to think that alone would do the trick. 
And please add your comments to Boot Iris to the testimony. And let us return to the cross examination. That and I was a uh, uh, we've seen that already. It should be there. Yeah. Iris came to the inner temple. She was dressed exactly as she had been at dinner. No problem there. You may recall uh, from the first part of this case that Iris actually gave this hood to Phoenix Wright. So she can't have been wearing it when she went to the inner temple. Objection! Witness, let's get the one thing straight. The defendant whom you claim to have met. He was wearing this demon warning hood, correct? Of course. That is a very important piece of clothing, I'll have you know. Wow. <laughs> Wait a minute. Objection! Uh, hold it right there. Why do you have that? That's the question of the day now, isn't it, Ms. Von Karma? I'll have you know that this hood was given to someone as a gift that night, before the lights out bell was rung. V what? You know where I'm going with this, don't you? If the witness had seen the defendant as she claims, then the iris she saw should have been missing this very hood. Well, well, well. Not a bad feeling at all, exposing contradictions like this. Now I understand that happy look on Wright's face every time he does it. Order! Order in the court! Witness your response! Wow! Sister. This hood. You have spare ones around the temple, don't you? Spares. Well, I do tend to make too many of them. See, a stockpile. A surplus of hoods, eh? Each knight is only given one hood. But this should be the only hood that Iris owned. Hmm. This is quite strange. Wow! If there was a surplus of hoods, then she could have worn one of those. There is no contradiction here. Hmm. I'm sorry to break this to you, Ms. Von Karma, but you won't get away that easily. Discrepancies such as this will sow seeds in any human heart. The seeds of doubt. Witness. While I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt, you must give every detail with precision. I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Sister, you shall continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath, and your way back to the inner temple. Those seeds of doubt are sprouting in the judge's heart. They just need a little more stimulation to bear fruit. Contradictory stimulation. Witness testimony after my bath. I finished my bath around 11 and I thought I should return to the inner temple. As I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard. I took a look and... Iris was... Oh, Mystic Elise! And with that sword of all things! Mystic Elise was staying in the corner room which faces out into the courtyard. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. You're a truly terrible sight, didn't you? If I were- if I were in your place... Sub subjunctive. Then it would be much like Ms. Von Kummer whipping Mr. Edgeworth in two in court. And me seeing it all from this very chair. Uh, well, something like that. This judge. His imagination is about as vivid and creative as Detective Gumshoe. I would look the fool if I commented on such foolishness. Anyway, this case is mine, Miles Edgeworth. Calling everyone by their full name. Can't you do something about that habit of yours? Holy Get pressing. How far is it from your room to the inner temple? Let me think a moment. About 20 minutes on these stumps of mine. About 15 minutes to Dusky Bridge from Hazakura Temple. The inner temple is just beyond the bridge. Still, you never made it back, sirs, that night, did you? That's right. I was heading along the walkway toward the main hall. Hold it! To say you heard a noise. A thump, just like that. Because that could only be the sound of the victim falling. 
It's very quiet in the temple, you know. You can even hear the snow falling from the branches. Um, just like that. But then, couldn't this noise you heard have been snow falling to the ground? I never thought of that. <laughs> Next one to laugh gets a vipping. Well, whatever the source of the sound, I looked over at the courtyard and... This is the second time that the witness has testified to seeing the defendant, but some doubt remains in these claims. Hey, just what does that mean? Just because you're a good-looking young man doesn't give you the right to... The murderer who stabbed the victim with the sword. Sister Bikini, try to recall exactly who it was you saw as clearly as you can. Hmm. Well, you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. Oh, now that you mention it, there was something awfully strange about her. Something that's been bugging me all this time. Please, don't keep us in suspense. A hood. A hood? That's right, it's coming back to me. Iris, she wasn't wearing a hood. I thought something was out of place, but it all makes sense now, doesn't it? After all, you'd given that hood away to someone, right? Ugh. Huh. You've dug your own grave, Miles Edgeworth. What do you say, Mr. Edgeworth? Is this testimony important? Important. This may initially appear to put me at a disadvantage, but I can't see any other leads at the moment. Your Honor, I would like these new statements to be added to the testimony. Heh. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth. If you want to hang yourself, need only to ask. I'll gladly lend you my VIP. Witness, add that statement to your testimony. No problem. Now that you mention it, Iris didn't have her hood on. Hold it! You were sure about that? Yes, after all, we always wear the same clothes. Ah, I don't mean because we're poor, you understand. It's our style. Yes, that's it. There's absolutely no need to explain yourself. Anyway, she looked different from normal, so that really stuck out. Like me holding a vipet's puppy, puppy instead of my vip. At least then it might bite you and not someone else. Iris didn't have a hood on, I'm sure of it. Very well. Now, please tell us to boot the victim, eh? The room the victim was staying in overlooked the courtyard, correct? Which means the victim's room is on the second floor? No, no, Hazakyo Temple is a single-story building, but the mountain itself slopes downward, which elevates the main gate side of the temple and the guest room's in the back. About the height of a two-story building. I see, and the victim was staying in one of these elevated rooms, correct? Yes. I should know. I'm the one who carried her things to her room, after all. Hold it. What makes you so sure of all this? It's just like I told you earlier. I heard a noise from the courtyard, okay? Thump. Just like that. Your one smart sister, I'll give you that. The autopsy report states that the victim's body was covered in bruises, indicating a fall from around 10 feet in height. Hmm, it appears that the witness was not mistaken then. Yep, yep, I'm more than just a pretty face, especially in winter. I'm a woman of faith, after all, the head honcho of Hazakura Temple. There's only two of them working there. What's wrong, Miles Edgeworth? No snappy comeback remark? It doesn't feel like she is lying. This is very powerful testimony, too. She claims to have seen the instant in which the defendant stabbed the victim. There are only two things I can believe in right now. My client, Iris, and my own abilities as a defense attorney. Okay, I don't think we needed to press on all of that. I think if we just look at the ends here. If she was stabbed after she was pushed out of the window, you look at the autopsy report. The body fell 10 feet after death, which means she was stabbed before he fell, her, fell 10 feet, which means she can't have been stabbed after having fallen out of the window. 
impressive logic. That's what I'd like to say anyway. Oh please do, my brain is something else, especially in winter. However, I think you are overlooking one thing. Ms. Von Karma, would you be so kind as to take another look at the autopsy report? The autopsy report? The victim did fall from a height of 10 feet. However, this fall was after she was killed. Ah! That's right, it says after death right here. The scene the witness claims to have seen is contradictory. If the defendant stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard, how did the victim then go on to take a 10 foot fall? Ah! Uh, order, order. The victim was killed and then fell. If that is the case, then the victim must have been killed in her room, don't you agree? That is the logical conclusion. Yes, that's right. The victim must have been stabbed by the defendant in her own room. And she was then thrown out of her window down into the courtyard below. Objection! Were there any signs of a struggle in Miss Junim's room? She was stabbed with a sword. That would leave a blood stain, wouldn't you agree? Oh, well, Miss Von Karma, was there any blood? Wah! No traces of blood were found in the victim's room. The whip has just caused traces of blood to be found on my glorious playoff beard. However, if there was no blood in the room, then you'll claim that... Wah! I'm sure there's no need for me to go over this. As I'm sure your honor is well aware, of then a stab wound produces the most blood. When it produces the most blood, very little blood is actually lost at the moment of a blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the most blood would be, would be lost from a body, that would be when the blade is removed. Indeed, with the weapon still in place, it acts like a lid on the wound. That's true, with the weapon still in the body, there wouldn't be much bleeding. A perfectly reasonable line of thinking. We have come to, the, to a conclusion then. The victim was thrown out of the window with the sword still in place. This removes all of the contradictions. Order, order, order. I must admit that this is a probable version of events. I'd expect no less from Franziska von Karma. He locates and takes control of every vital point. Hmm. Seems that we need a clearer testimony from the witness. Remove all supposition on your part and tell us only the facts, please. Witness, please, remain standing on the crate. Don't go selling me short now. The weight of winter snow has bent me out of shape, especially my back and my mood. Sister, please, give us your testimony. I will give you a vigorous massage once we are finished here. With the whip. Oh, oh boy. Alright, alright. Further details. When I looked across at the scene, the sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see her stab Mr. Galise. I've never seen so much blood before. That's when I fainted. You can't blame me, can you? And when I awoke, Mystic Amy was... Stabbing Mr. Elise through the back. Hmm. This all confirms Ms. Von Karma's theory. Von Karma strive for nothing but perfection. Putting together such facts is nothing for me. You should know that, Miles Edgeworth. Perfection is an impossibility, Franziska Von Karma. And I'm here to teach you just that. Okay, so... We're gonna want to know a bit more... A bit more about this sword, right? At that time, was the victim bleeding? Well, I was very shocked to be seeing all this, of course. Though I'm not entirely sure. But I don't think I saw any blood. Not then. I'm sure that you didn't. The, wep the, ve the weapon was acting as a plug in the wound. In any case, let's be clear on one very important point. Did you actually see at the instant in which the victim was stabbed? Think carefully, this is very important. The virus we're talking about here, I'm thinking for all I'm worth. 
No, when I looked over, the sword was already in Mr. Galisa's body. Hmm. Might not be conclusive, but... This testimony supports her theory. The victim was stabbed in her room and then dropped into the courtyard. I think this proves it rather well, Miles Edgeworth. Rather well. Well. <laughs> Accents. Hold it! So you're saying that you saw the victim's blood? <laughs> That's right. Some of it had splattered onto Iris too. Then the defendant was arrested, she was meditating in her room. And her blood-flecked clothing was neatly folded in the corner. What? Her clothes were blood-flecked as well? Hmm, that seems quite conclusive to me. What should I do? Press this point further? Going back to your previous statement, you said that you saw a little bleeding when the victim was stabbed. But now, you say you saw the victim bleeding? Well, 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 I say that what I saw is what I saw. W what did you see? Maybe I didn't see the poor woman get stabbed, but I saw the girl pull the sword out of her, plain as day. Pulling the sword out? Well, it wasn't exactly pulling, it was more like it came out. Witness, you will add this statement to your testimony. Oh, well, was that important? More important than you could imagine. I saw the incident in which the blade plunged into the hilt was smoothly drawn out. Okay, here's the problem with this statement. Look at this blade. If it was actually plunged into the hilt, there'd be blood on more of it. And if it was smoothly drawn out, it would need to have not have fewer like annoying branches all over it. Pulling this blade out of someone would be a mess. It would not be smoothly drawn out. Mr. Bikini, you are a reliable witness. At least, I'd like to think so. But there are too many contradictions here. W what do you mean? You make it sound as though I'm a liar. But you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. What contradictions are you talking about? In the scene that the witness claims to have seen, the weapon was thrust up to its hilt into the victim. Furthermore, the killer withdrew the weapon smoothly from her body. However, both of these are complete impossibilities. What do you mean? Please explain your- ah! Explain yourself. To start with, do you think it would be possible to stab someone to the hilt with this? No matter how I look at the defendant, she doesn't appear strong enough for that. Doesn't appear? What meaningless dribble. I too may appear to be weak and frail. But I can crush man to my heel and make them veep should I so choose. The objection stands. I wept a little back there, I must admit. That isn't the only issue here. If this sword was truly stabbed into the body up to the hilt, well, just look at all the branches on it. It certainly wouldn't come out smoothly. That's... We also have the problem of the amount of bleeding. It's true that when a blade is left in a body, it acts as a plug of sorts. However, when the weapon is shaped like this, it's an entirely different story. The wound would be too large for the blade to completely stop the bleeding. Objection! That's nothing more than conjecture. In reality, the victim was stabbed with a shichishito. Even a weapon of this nature may still sometimes slide out smoothly and may still sometimes stop the blood loss. Objection! I'm not finished. There is still one more conclusive contradiction. Y you still got more? This one is simple. If this sword really was thrusting all the way to the hilt, why is there only blood on the tip of it? Huh? If this witness is telling the truth, then there should be blood along the entire length of the sword. No! Order, order, wah! Bravo, Miles Edgeworth. Raising this many contradictions from a single piece of evidence. All the other attorneys I know could maybe manage one, if that. But what does this all mean? You have proven contradictions regarding the murder weapon, but... Having come this far, there can be only one answer. And that is? The weapon used to kill the victim 
was not the sheet she sheet her. W what? Foolishy foolish idea born from the foolish mind of a foolhardy foolish fool. Let's examine this again. What was it that made us think this sword was the murder weapon? W well... It's because Mystic Amy was holding it. Exactly. However, if you reflect on this, that is the only basis we have to assume such a thing. The impression left by the scene was just too strong. That is what influenced us. It influenced us to believe that Shichishido was the murder weapon. Order, 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 wah! So maybe the Shichishido was not the murder weapon. Even if that is the case, it changes nothing, Miles Edgeworth. Mr. Hare saw everything. He saw the defendant stab the victim with a sword-like object. Hmm, that's true. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth? If that is so, I would like the prosecution to answer the obvious question it raises. The obvious question? Yes, namely, where did the real murder weapon disappear to? It goes without saying that the police searched the main hall in the surrounding area. Perhaps the prosecution can enlighten us as to if a sword-like object was found? That's... Answer the question, Ms. Von Karma. No evidence of that kind was found. Hmm. Another mystery to throw into the pile. A trial without a murder weapon is a tricky beast. Excuse me, could I say something? I just remembered something, actually. What is it, sister? I was just thinking, it's possible that just maybe what actually happened was it was just over there. What exactly are you going on about here? The murder weapon, I mean. Maybe I think I might know where the sword was disposed of. You what? Well then. I think we need to hear testimony from you one more time, sis. Impossible. What else? What else could this old woman have seen? Location of the weapon. I saw the murder at around 11pm, and after asking them to be reported, I went out to the main gate. And there, I saw tracks. Tracks that indicated the snowmobile had been used. It takes 15 minutes to walk to Dusky Bridge, but less than 5 is in one of those. Maybe they threw the weapon into Eagle River and came back while I was knocked out? Iris could have done that. She can drive a snowmobile after all. Hmm. Witness, please, tell us everything you know right away next time. Well, I'm not in the best of shape, but with my back and my age, you know. Quite. There were indeed snowmobile tracks in front of the main gate. Here is a photograph. Snowmobile, eh? I see. Well, it certainly is an interesting theory. The tracks begin in front of Hasakura Temple, and run all the way to Dusky Bridge. Tracks were added to the court record. That solves your pesky little problem, yes? The Eagle River's current is quite swift, meaning that it doesn't freeze over in winter, making it the perfect place to dispose of the murder weapon. Did she really go to the river to dispose of the murder weapon? Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, your cross examination, please. Location of the weapon. Okay, so our problem here. You saw the murder at around 11 pm, right? If we look at this photograph that we just got, there's a set of tracks for coming back from Dusky Bridge to the Hazakura Temple, but there isn't a set of tracks for going from Hazakura Temple to Dusky Bridge. There's just one set of tracks. I think I need to press first. I can see what the problem is, but I think you have to press in order to get to the right statements. As I recall, there was a snowmobile outside the main gate when I visited. Well, that's it. That's the only one we have. It'll run no matter how much snow falls. Now, you're certain the snowmobile was there at the main gate when you arrived? Yes, of course. It was parked in front of the gate. So, she had already gone, discarded the murder weapon, and returned by that time. I'm not sure if this is really relevant. What should I do? 
I needed answers to every possible doubt. The snow revealing question. Was it still warm at that time? Huh? 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 What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean, eh? What do you mean, Miles Edgeworth? I'm playing to a slow crowd here. It goes without saying that using a snowmobile will heat its engine. If it was still warm, then it means it was recently used. Ah, I see. I never thought of that. Hmm, that's right. I overlooked that too. Of course you did. Then answer the question, please, witness. I don't often go around touching hot engines. Hmm. However, now that you mention it, there wasn't any snow on it. No? Yes, for some reason only the snowmobile wasn't covered in snow. There wasn't any snow on it? Curses. Seems highly likely that the killer did use the snowmobile then, eh? How long does it take to get to Dusky Bridge by snowmobile? I think I just want to present the tracks photo to this one. Objection! Yep, music stopped. I admit this photograph proves something. It proves that the snowmobile was used on the night of the murder. You finally accepted the inevitable, it seems, Miles Edgebeth. However, if what the witness says is true, then why is there only one set of tracks? What do you mean? Iris left Harzakura Temple, threw the weapon into the river, and then returned. If this was the case, then naturally there should be two sets of tracks in the snow. Those from heading out to the bridge, and those from coming back. Ah, you're right. Hmm. You are forgetting one thing, Miles Edgeworth. On the night of the murder, it was snowing. The tracks leading to the bridge were erased by the snowfall. This removes your precious contradiction, now doesn't it? I see. While she was at the river, the snow stopped, leaving just the return tracks in the snow. What do you have to say now, Miles Edgeworth? Is there a flaw in her theory? This idea that the snowfall covered one set of tracks? Yeah, there's a bit of a problem with that. The tracks to the river were covered by snow. What a nice theory. However, Ms. Von Karma, that is impossible. Would you care to explain? Why there is a rude index finger currently pointed in my general direction? No need. The evidence will do all of the talking for me. On the night of the murder, the killer went to and returned from Dusky Bridge in order to dispose of the murder weapon. The outgoing tracks were raced by snow. Also claims Ms. Von Karma. Mr. Edgeworth, present your evidence to the contrary, eh? Evidence that the outgoing tracks were not covered by snow. Okay, so if we look at the weather report here, the snow stopped at 10.50pm, and we know that uh, the murder was witnessed after 11, uh, which means that the snow would have already stopped, which means that both sets of tracks would be visible. Witness, please tell us again what time it was when you witnessed the crime. Like I said, it was around 11. Of course, this means that the weapon was thrown away after that time, correct? On that note, please take a look at this data. It is the weather report for Eagle Mountain on the night of the murder. The weather report? Snow started to fall at 7pm, but it stopped at around 10.50. Therefore, when the sister witnessed the crime at 11pm, the snow had already stopped falling. It is impossible for any tracks made after that time to have been covered up. Ah! Uh, order, order. Very well then. It looks like Ms. Von Karma's claim has been snowed in. Ah! It's too soon to be closing this trial due to snow. Miles Edgeworth, how pathetic of you to rely on the weather of all things. Answer me this, then. Then is a re weather report ever correct? Uh, no, 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 you got it all wrong. This isn't a forecast, this is actual data. Yeah! Forecast data, all weather reports have some inaccuracies. It may still have been snowing in the vicinity well past 11pm. Hmm... 
It's true. We cannot be totally sure, eh? What? How did she pull that off? It stopped snowing at Hazakura Temple when the murder took place. You need to provide conclusive evidence of this. I've come this far. There's no turning back now. Very well. I, too, cannot allow any doubt to remain concerning this testimony. Huh. You can't back down, can you? Such a perfectionist, Miles Edgeworth. Very well then, Mr. Edgeworth. Where is your evidence that it had already stopped snowing when the victim was killed? This one's pretty easy. Ah, uh, we look at the photograph of the victim. There's no snow on top of her. Ultimately, it all comes down to one point. That being, whether or not it was snowing in that courtyard when the victim was stabbed. That's right, but proving that is... incredibly easy. If we want to know whether it was snowing or not, this photo will tell us everything. Of course, I am referring to the photo of the crime scene. As you can see, everything is covered with snow. With just one exception. And that is... The victim herself, Miss Elise Dunim. Why is there no snow on top of her? The answer is simple. It, it had stopped snowing when she was killed, that's why. In other words, if the killer really did go to the Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon, then in this photograph there should be two sets of tracks. Ah! Order, order. Just what are you... Ah! Just what are you suggesting, Miles Edgeworth? To be honest, I am not entirely sure myself, but... This is simply what all of the facts point to. That night, someone used the snowmobile to leave Hazakura Temple. From the tracks left, it can be understood that they were heading for Dusky Bridge. At that time, it was still snowing. Of course it was, because those tracks were erased by the snow. Then, when this person returned to Hazakura Temple, the snow had stopped. Thus, the return tracks remained. Hmm... Can I say something? This all sounds a bit fishy to me. What does, sister? There is... only one key for the snowmobile. Furthermore, on the night in question, the Nelda defendant had it. <coughs> the key was found in her room after the murder. Which can only mean... Which can only mean that night, Iris used the snowmobile to go to the inner temple. But, Iris said that she never went there. I should probably press on this point some more when I get the chance. Snowmobile can't cross the suspension bridge, so she must have left it on the Harzakura side of the bridge and crossed on foot. That sounds right. But, what's odd is, when I left Iris and returned to the Harzakura temple, I didn't see anything near Dusky Bridge. You, you must have just failed to see it, sister. Maybe, but when I made it back to Hazakura Temple, it was there, by the main gate. The snowmobile, I mean. I know what I saw. It was covered in snow, too. But that isn't possible. Order, order, order in the court. What does this all mean? Mm. But then what was the snowmobile used for? It wasn't taken by the defendant when she went to the inner temple. If it had been, then the witness couldn't possibly have seen it by the gate. Furthermore, it wasn't used by the killer to dispose of the murder weapon. If that was the case, there should be two sets of tracks in this photo. All we know is this. After it stopped snowing, Someone used the snowmobile to return to Hazakura Temple. Hmm... I never thought a simple snowmobile could cause so much trouble. I think we've learned all we can from this witness. Yes, yes, I've nothing more to add. I've told you everything, everything that I know. 
But then, that still leaves us with the same problem. If only there was someone, a witness who would testify to having seen the snowmobile. A witness, huh? Was there no one out walking, perhaps, near Dusky Bridge on that night? I don't think that's likely. It was cold enough to freeze your ears off. Only an idiot would go out wandering in that. Unless they had something really important to do. Hmm. That's a shame. Hold on. Something is coming to me. An idiot may well have gone wandering out in the, on that subarctic night. Your Honor. Actually, there just might be one individual who may be of help to us. R really? You know of someone who might have seen the snowmobile on the night of the murder? I don't know for sure if he saw it or not, but there are two things about him that do come to mind. Which are? First, that he saw something incredible on the night of the murder. And the second being? This individual that I'm thinking of went wandering outside on that cold night. In other words, he is our kind of idiot. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this idiot talking about? It's Larry. This guy must be a product of Jean-Luc de la Duke's guide. Jean-Luc de, de la Duke's guide to obnoxious French painting? I don't know how to read that. <laughs> this is Larry Butts, a disciple of the victim, Elise Dunim. Her student? Interesting. And why was he wandering a boot outside on the night of the murder? But that's... I could tell them all about his designs for Iris, but it may cost us his credibility as a witness before I even call him. He is, after all, an artiste. He was, perhaps, searching for something in the snowy scenery that would move him. Although I cannot guarantee that this is the reason. And so? This unfortunate, unreliable looking man. What exactly was it that he saw? I intend to extract that from him right here in this courtroom. Summon this youth as a witness immediately. I have no choice, do I? I believe he's in the gallery for this trial. It will not take long to summon him. Very well. Larry. You may have escaped me yesterday. But today I'm going to get everything out of you. The court will now adjourn for a 20 minute break. Miss Von Karma, please see to preparing the next witness. Understood, Your Honor. Good. Well then, court is now in recess. In recess. To be continued. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the first part of this trial. Uh, next time... We get to talk to Larry. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it for now. Bye-bye! <laughs>